Thank you uh, very much for uh, having me here. I, I think this is a uh, very important topic, and uh, this uh, and current events really uh, increase uh, its significance. Um, Russia, I believe, overall is, is a very serious strategic challenge uh, to the United States. Uh, Russia under Putin is, has become increasingly anti-democratic uh, and hostile to the United States. Um, in the last uh, five years, uh, Russia has um, invaded two countries, and of course with the Ukrainian situation evolving as, uh, as I speak. Um, Putin's rationale, as uh, uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has pointed out, is, is very similar to, to that of what Hitler used in the 1930s uh, to justify his actions. Now, of course, Putin is not Hitler. Uh, she didn't intend that meaning uh, either. Uh, the best description I've seen of Putin um, in the Russian press is basically he's a cross between uh, Count Otto von Bismarck and uh, Street Thug. And uh, I think that's actually pretty accurate. Um, according um, to uh, Secretary of State uh, John Kerry, quote, the United States condemns uh, the Russian Federation's invasion and occupation of Ukrainian territory and its violation of Ukrainian um, sovereignty and territorial integrity. And he goes on to list about a half dozen agreements or, or treaties that uh, they're in uh, contravention of because of this. Um, he later went on to talk about the, uh, quote, an incredible act of aggression. It's really stunning. Now, NATO and, and the European uh, Union uh, have uh, denounced um, Russian uh, actions, uh, but thus far we haven't seen uh, a lot in, in the way of, of, of action to really um, attempt to, to deter uh, future, at least future Russian actions uh, in, the, in the Ukraine. Um, Russian journalist Alexander Galtz, um, one of the, one, I believe one of uh, the most perceptive uh, Russian journalists um, who actually believes in democracy, uh, characterized um, Putin's actions as follows, and quote, uh, in the span of a few short weeks, Russia has managed to restore the Iron Curtain and launch a military confrontation reminiscent of the worst years of, of the Cold War. Now, Russians, uh, Russian views on nuclear weapons, Russian modernization programs involving nuclear weapons and delivery systems take on their significance because of uh, Russian foreign policy objectives uh, and because of Russian uh, views and doctrine associated with the use of, of nuclear weapons. Um, now, Unfortunately, um, U.S. policy, I think, is, is based on what amounts to a um, um, couple of fantasies about Russia. And the first one is, and this was stated in, in the 2010 Nuclear Posture Review, quote, Russia and the United States are no longer adversaries and the prospects for military confrontation uh, have dramatically uh, declined. Um, then it went on to basically uh, argue that um, maintenance, maintenance of nuclear parity um, with Russia wasn't very important anymore because of this uh, change in policy. Um, in both the uh, Russian actions in, in Georgia and the Ukraine, uh, the U.S. Uh, unfortunately made no significant effort to deter uh, the events before they happened. Uh, and um, no um, real penalty uh, was imposed on Russia for what it did uh, in these situations. And uh, certainly the current actions in the Ukraine are much, uh, much more significant than what happened in Georgia. As a matter of fact, I, if, if you had asked me a few weeks ago whether I thought this was going to happen, I would have said no. Uh, but it has happened, and I think we, we can't uh, ignore uh, what the implications of that are uh, for uh, United States and, and uh, NATO security. Um, under the um, current Russian view of, of nuclear weapons, and this was stated by the third-ranking member of the um, Russian Defense Ministry uh, in, in 2009, highest priority uh, was given uh, to uh, Russian um, 
strategic nuclear capability, and second highest priority for defense spending uh, was given to what they call aerospace defense, which in, in reality is, is a strategic uh, missile defense and defense against bombers and cruise missiles and, and uh, even potentially hypersonic um, vehicles. Now, Russian attitudes toward nuclear weapons, I believe, are fundamentally different uh, from anything that exists almost anywhere uh, in the West. Um, the, um, the, the Russians are, um, they have announced um, at the defense minister level uh, in December um, 2010, right after the uh, U.S. Senate ratification or approval of uh, the New Star Treaty, that their intent was to increase the number of nuclear weapons and delivery systems up to the, the permissible New Star level. The problem with that is there's really no New Star limit on either of the two uh, because uh, the, of the fact that uh, the New Star Treaty drastically discounts uh, counting of, of uh, nuclear bombs on uh, or missiles uh, carried by uh, uh, heavy bomber aircraft and, and because there are massive loopholes in the New Star Treaty. For example, the uh, New Star Treaty does not mention rail mobile ICBMs and all the definitions in the treaty were changed uh, to exclude coverage of, of rail mobile ICBMs. And uh, they also eliminated uh, the uh, Star Treaty prohibitions on air launched ICBMs or surface ship launched ICBMs. Uh, together, those are uh, very large loopholes uh, that can be exploited to achieve capabilities uh, far in excess of what's notionally permissible uh, under uh, the uh, New Star Treaty. Now, uh, in um, middle, uh, the middle of 2013, President Obama uh, made a major speech in, in Berlin um, in which uh, he uh, called for a negotiated one-third reduction, up to one-third reduction actually was his language, in the number of deployed strategic nuclear uh, weapons from the New START levels. Uh, on the day he um, made the speech, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, rejected future uh, reductions in uh, strategic nuclear weapons. Now, what gives Russian, um, um, Russian um, uh, a policy relating to nuclear weapons uh, extreme importance is their nuclear doctrine, and, and it's almost unique um, in the world. Um, their nuclear doctrine permits the use of nuclear weapons in conventional warfare uh, in local and regional uh, conflicts, which they rather amazingly characterize in their doctrinal literature as de-escalation of a conflict. That's a rather optimistic view of, of what happens when you start using nuclear weapons. Um, in December 2012, the U.S. National Intelligence Council, which is, works for the Director of National Intelligence, wrote, quote, nuclear ambitions uh, in the U.S. and Russia over the last 20 years have evolved in opposite directions. Reducing the role of nuclear weapons in U.S. A security strategy is the U.S. objective, while Russia uh, is pursuing uh, new um, concepts and capabilities for expanding the role of nuclear weapons in its uh, security strategy, unquote. Uh, in 2009, uh, then commander of the uh, Strategic um, Missile Force, or Strategic Missile Troops is technically called in, in Russia, um, announced what their, basically what their targeting strategy was. And he said, and, and this was subsequently repeated by, uh, by his successor and several other uh, generals in the, in the strategic missile forces. What he said was, in peacetime, they, and he's talking about strategic nuclear missiles, are intended to ensure deterrence of large-scale non-nuclear or nuclear aggression against Russia and its allies. In conventional war, they ensure the opponent is forced to cease hostilities uh, on advantageous conditions uh, for Russia, by, meaning, by means of single or multiple preventive uh, strikes against the aggressor's most important facilities. In nuclear war, they ensure the destruction of facilities of the opponent's military and economic potential by means of an initial massive nuclear missile strike and subsequent multiple and single uh, nuclear missile strikes. Now, this is very important because basically it's a rejection of all Western views about nuclear weapons and their role in, in deterrence 
uh, really since the 1950s. A uh, core element of Western thinking is that there's a major fire break uh, between conventional and nuclear uh, weapons use and uh, that the um, consequences of nuclear weapons uh, use uh, are unpredictable and they could be catastrophic. Uh, Russian uh, uh, doctrine on the use of nuclear weapons as stated by their military leadership says uh, rather overtly uh, that once you use nuclear weapons, if we use nuclear weapons, we're going to win uh, and achieve our objectives. Uh, that's a rather optimistic view of what the possibilities uh, are under those circumstances. Uh, Russian um, senior officials, including Putin himself, on several occasions have made direct nuclear threats, including uh, nuclear targeting threats. Um, and. Um, the uh, threat of preventive or, pre or preemptive nuclear strikes. Um, uh, this was made against specific nations and in at least one case, the entire world. Um, Russian um, press reports um, state uh, that their exercises um, uh, almost invariably um, in, the, in the West, the Zapad exercises in the West and, and, and some of the other ones, uh, use the simulated use of nuclear weapons um, in, in almost all, all cases. In the big strategic exercises, which are announced as nuclear um, exercises by um, the Kremlin, um, the, um, the, the exercises routinely involve direct participation of Putin, live missile launches, um, and uh, in the case of the October 2013, uh, exercise, um, you, you had a record number of, of these launches that involved, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, four strategic missiles, ICBMs and SLBMs, uh, four tactical nuclear um, uh, missiles, uh, uh, an, a live ABM interceptor launch, and a dozen surface-to-air missile launches. So basically, they appear here to have a simulated, uh, you know, full-scale nuclear war. And this is done on an annual uh, basis. Um, the open source information uh, we have on actual Russian uh, strategic nuclear modernization uh, programs um, is largely from the Russian government uh, itself and secondarily, um, although some frequently in more detail, by Russian um, press stories. We get almost no information other than three numbers uh, which are aggregated and not very useful um, from uh, the New Star Treaty. We still have useful data in the old STAR Treaty uh, Memorandum of, of Agreement, but that's now five years out of date, so it's, it's of decreasing uh, utility. So there, uh, there is some significant uncertainty. Now, the Obama administration doesn't talk very much about Russian uh, strategic nuclear programs. If you do a lot of research, you can confirm uh, at least the thrust of what the Russians say uh, they are doing uh, in, the, uh, in the nuclear area and uh, in particularly the strategic nuclear area. Uh, Russia maintains five uh, legacy um, ICBMs and SOBMs from the uh, Soviet period. Uh, it's modernized one of them, the SSN-23, and, and uh, they have stated they've tested what they call an advanced combat payload on the SS-19. That's reportedly in the Russian press a hypersonic boost glide vehicle. Uh, but the core of the programs are actual, actual new systems, uh, things, systems that didn't exist that, during the Cold War um, that have been developed subsequent, tested subsequent, and, and deployed subsequent to the end of the Cold War. And that's literally most of what the Russians are doing. I divide these into uh, the, the Yeltsin legacy programs and things that have been announced since basically uh, December 2010 when uh, the U.S. Senate ratified um, the uh, New Star Treaty. Now, the, the Yeltsin legacy uh, systems include the uh, new SS-27 ICBM, uh, originally a single warhead, um, then merged under, under Putin. Um, and there's a lot of evidence that this is a Star Treaty violation. Um, they have uh, developed and tested uh, with, in many cases, unsuccessful results in, in case of the missile, the the Bull of a 30 SLBM, uh, and um, the, uh, they have introduced into, into the Russian Navy service the uh, Bore class submarines, a couple of them um, that they um, 
who carry the missile on. Uh, they plan eight of the uh, War A class submarines carrying uh, 16 Bulova 30s each. They have introduced, and the Obama administration has con confirmed this, the KH-102 long-range nuclear outcome, uh, which uses uh, uh, some stealth technology. And they've uh, produced uh, a, a, a small number of additional uh, TU-160 uh, heavy bombers uh, in contravention um, of a commitment made as part of their 1991-1992 presidential um, nuclear uh, initiatives. Um, since um, 2010, um, we have had the Russian government announce large increases, um, factor four actually, in, in uh, the, uh, uh, their numbers for this year, uh, in the number of, of ICBMs and SLBMs um, they are uh, producing. Uh, Putin in 2012 uh, said that they um, intend to add or produce um, 400 new ICBMs, and, and, and uh, the Russians use the term ICBMs to refer to both ICBMs as we use the, the word and, and SLBMs uh, by 2020. Um, and uh, they've announced a series of, of um, new ICBM programs uh, starting uh, about December 2010. Uh, the current pattern of Russian modernization suggests we're going to see um, um, additional missiles beyond the ones that they talk most about, uh, probably uh, in the 2020s. Uh, the announced program involves uh, modernization of 98% of the uh, ground-based ICBM force by uh, 2021. Th they have announced a new uh, heavy bomber, um, which um, uh, would be um, deployed uh, probably around uh, 2025 if they're successful, and at uh, 2030 if they're less successful in the development program. Uh, the current pattern of, of modernization um, uh, basically uh, is one in which we will see complete modernization of Russian strategic forces before we modernize anything um, in the U.S. Uh, arsenal. Uh, the Obama administration has confirmed that, they're de that they are deploying several substantially uh, new MIRV uh, ICBMs and SLBMs that listed uh, the SS-27 under the Russian name, the Yars. Uh, the new Bore class submarine uh, and the Bulova 30, and a new heavy ICBM. The heavy ICBM, I think, is, is uh, in all probability the most significant development we've, we've seen because it, it's literally a, um, a resurrection of uh, the most uh, disturbing of, of the Soviet um, um, Cold War uh, ICBM uh, programs. New missile they've now recently called the, the Sarmat. Russian press reports it'll carry uh, 10 heavy or 15 uh, medium um, warheads. The head of, of the, of the, of the uh, strategic missile troops says it'll also have a conventional warhead option on it. Um, recently retired Major General who headed up the um, Fourth Central Research Institute, uh, which is uh, deeply involved with their nuclear programs, uh, says that it's capable of attacking the United States over the South Pole. Now, that to me suggests they may very well have resurrected uh, the Soviet-era fractional orbital bombardment system, because uh, that's the easiest way to, to do that sort of thing. Uh, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if, 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 if that's um, not the case. Now, the Russians have um, also um, announced the, the testing, and they, they say they're going to deploy this year of a new ICBM, they recently uh, started calling the RS-26. Um, it's referred to frequently as a reduced range uh, ICBM uh, in Russia. It appears to be a really what amounts to an IRBM missile uh, designed to replace the, uh, the SS-20 eliminated by the INF Treaty. It may technically be an ICBM uh, if what they're saying is true. They claim it flew to 5,600 kilometers during the first test, but all subsequent testing um, has been to INF um, ranges. Um, at a minimum, it's a major circumvention of, of the INF treaty, and it could end up um, 
uh, being a New Stark violation if, if some of the press reports in Russia about it are true. Now, when this is put in the context of a number of other Russian actions relating to the INF Treaty, uh, it appears uh, very much that um, the Russians are recreating uh, the Soviet era uh, intermediate range uh, nuclear force. This includes a um, cruise missile, um, which the um, Obama administration has, has confirmed um, as being tested um, in, a, in, in a way that appears, quote, inconsistent with the INF Treaty. Uh, and there are a number of other issues uh, of INF compliance. So we could very well end up with um, the, the Russians having um, capabilities uh, that are supposed, uh, that literally are not supposed to exist anymore through a combination of violations and circumventions of the treaty. Now, uh, one Russian journalist actually says that um, the Soviets considered something he called a pseudo ICBM, which is a 6,000 kilometer range ICBM, uh, which really can't perform an ICBM mission. But uh, the missile, quote, did not make it through the filter of international acceptance. Now Putin has done ex exactly the same thing. Um, and uh, there hasn't been a peep out of the US government, uh, the, any NATO government that I know about. Um, and uh, the U.S. arms control enthusiast community. Now, um, Russia has also announced uh, at the senior level on several occasions, actually, uh, the development of the new rail mobile ICBM. That's significant because uh, the New Star Treaty doesn't say a word about rail mobile ICBMs and all the definitions uh, that uh, dealt with them in, in the Star Treaty have either been changed to exclude them or deleted completely. Uh, right now, uh, if they put um, ICBMs uh, on uh, rail mobile launchers, effectively they don't count under the STAR Treaty unless the Russians agree uh, to a treaty amendment. And, oh, by the way, about uh, a week or two ago, uh, there was an article in the Russian press uh, saying uh, that they may change the missile on this, and it may be the RS-26. Now, uh, if they do that, um, They've got an SS-20 equivalent uh, completely outside of any arms control uh, constraints. Uh, in 2013, uh, General, Colonel General retired Alexander Zelen, who was the former chief of the Russian Air Force, um, now an advisor in, in, to the, the Minister of Defense, uh, indicated in a briefing he gave that Russia will deploy a um, uh, a air-launched uh, ICBM. Um, then in addition to that, we now have uh, perhaps as many as six missiles that are mentioned in the Russian press uh, that I would call, uh, using uh, Secretary Rumsfeld's terminology, known unknowns. The, these include, uh, in, in terms of the most significant ones, uh, a new medium ICBM, uh, Yarzam, whatever that is, and something they're characterizing as a super heavy ICBM capable of carrying 15 heavy nuclear warheads. Now, some of these uh, may be names for other names for some of the systems we know about, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if um, one or two of them turn out uh, to be real um, additional programs that show up in, in, the, uh, in the 2020s. Um, they have, uh, the Russian Defense Ministry has uh, released, uh, signed a contract for the development of a fifth generation missile submarine. We don't know much about it other than the Russian press is saying it'll carry both ballistic and, and uh, cruise missiles and, and the reported uh, date uh, for, for this thing to appear is 20, uh, 2020. They've also signed a contract for a new um, heavy bomber, uh, it's being described in the Russian press as a stealth bomber similar to the, the B-2. It's going to carry cruise missiles, according to Putin, and recent re uh, press reports say it'll carry hypersonic missiles. Um, this could be available as early as 2025, possibly uh, 2030 or, or later. Uh, the Russian um, Defense Ministry uh, officials have uh, stated on many occasions that they're developing new types of nuclear weapons. Um, Russian press reports indicate uh, that these um, uh, range from uh, um, new uh, very high yield thermonuclear warheads for the missiles through, through MIRV, uh, lightweight MIRV warheads, 
through precision low yield nuclear warheads and uh, low collateral damage designs. Uh, Rush, about three Russian press reports indicate that they're in the process of deploying some of uh, what they call precision low yield weapons, uh, 50 to 200 tons nuclear yield uh, on uh, strategic missiles. Now, um, in 2011, the Obama administration said the Russians had between four and 6,500 uh, nuclear weapons, 4,000 and 6,500 nuclear weapons. Um, this is actually lower uh, than many Russian estimates of, of their capability. ITAR TASS, which of course is the main official news agency, stated in, in, in 2009 they probably had between 15 and 17,000 uh, nuclear warheads. Um, there is substantial evidence uh, that um, the um, Russians have not met their commitments uh, under the presidential nuclear initiatives of 1991-1992 concerning tactical nuclear weapons, and they're actually modernizing battlefield nuclear capability, including the Iskander M, which the third ranking member in the, in the Russian Defense Ministry who dealt with procurement at the time said was nuclear capable. Um, they uh, maintain, according to the Obama administration, uh, on the order of uh, 10 times as many tactical nuclear weapons um, as we do. Um, and um, there are other indications they're being modernized. For example, in 2012, Zelen, he, at the time he was the chief of the Russian Air Force, said the new Su-34 long-range strike fighter uh, is going to be given a uh, nuclear cruise missile and so it could participate in, in the Air Force uh, strategic aviation. Um, if that happens, it's a, a new start violation in, in the making. There's a little question about that. Now, Russia um, is uh, deploying what it calls an aerospace defense system which is, in effect, what we would call a missile defense system, uh, anti-satellite and, and uh, bomber um, defense, cruise missile defense uh, capability. Um, the Russians have announced the Moscow ABM system is going to be modernized with the A-235 system, um, and um, they have indicated they've tested uh, an experimental uh, ABM interceptor, which presumably is part of that uh, system. Three senior generals in the aerospace uh, defense troops, including its commander, um, say that Russian surface-to-air missiles are going to take over the mission of intercepting ICBMs and SLBM warheads. And two of them specifically mentioned the S-500 system, which is currently uh, under development. Now, the, the, the Russians um, are also uh, significantly operating uh, their uh, bomber defense, cruise missile defense capability. They've announced um, that um, they uh, are de deploying 56 battalions of S-400, which is a new surface-to-air missile, primarily um, bomber defense, uh, but with secondary capabilities against medium-range uh, ballistic missiles. Uh, they've announced 10 um, battalions of S-500s by 2020. Uh, that um, we don't really know for sure exactly what the, their battalions uh, will consist of, but uh, based on, on one article, it, it would appear that uh, they're going to deploy at least 10 times the number uh, of ABM interceptors that, that we are planning to do, although their capabilities will be less in, in terms of, of range. But uh, since they're uh, going to be a mobile uh, system, they're actually going to be substantially more survivable than, than our capability uh, is. Uh, they are in deploying and operating uh, interceptor aircraft, uh, new designs uh, based on the um, Su-35, uh, 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 which is now in, in early stages uh, of being uh, uh, produced, and the uh, uh, miss a, a interceptor aircraft or fighter aircraft, really, that they call the uh, PAC-FA, which is uh, what they characterize as a fifth-generation uh, fighter. Now. All in all, we, I think we face a very significant uh, threat that we're not doing very much to, to deal with. The Obama administration wants to do more arms control with the Russians. Um, lots of luck, but uh, the Russians won't even agree uh, to negotiations, much less any sort of outcome along the lines the Obama administration wants. 
Uh, U.S. Um, nuclear modernization programs are minimal. Um, we um, are basically replacing systems uh, only when they're 40 to 80 years of, of age. Um, we um, won't have any uh, new systems um, in operation, and, and that's under the optimistic assumption that budget cuts don't derail this, um, which could very easily be the case. But assuming everything went perfectly and we actually had the funding, just about uh, nothing will be operational before the late uh, 2020. So basically we're talking about a 15-year decline in, uh, in our capabilities with only uh, minimal sustainment and, and only very even more minor uh, improvements uh, in capabilities. Um, the administration um, would like to uh, limit tactical nuclear weapons. Uh, the Russians have said no, at least um, without a series of U.S. concessions um, um, that no administration, including the Obama administration, would be willing to make. Um, and uh, even, even then, uh, that's their conditions for talking about uh, limitations, not agreeing to limitations. Now, well, what does this all mean? Well, we know that Putin is going to run Russia for the foreseeable future. He, he may very well turn out to be um, president for, for life. Um, and uh, we know he's um, willing to use force uh, to achieve uh, his objectives. How far he goes, I don't know. Nobody does. Uh, but uh, we could be in a confrontation with, with, uh, with this uh, gentleman uh, within uh, this decade uh, if, he, if he thinks he can get away with a, uh, an attack on, on, on a NATO country. And uh, he may very well think that in, in light of the way we're reacting to what he's, he's already done. Now, uh, Secretary of um, Defense, or prior, uh, first Secretary of Defense under the Obama administration, uh, Robert Gates, um, recently wrote um, that, uh, quote, as we reduce the size of our nuclear arsenal, we potentially get down to numbers that having allies who have their own nuclear capability could be very useful, unquote. I don't find that very reassuring. Um, I don't think we can rely on the British and French, uh, French for uh, our nuclear deterrent. And, oh, by the way, the French have never made a uh, nuclear guarantee to anybody in almost certainly never will. Um, NATO, uh, in, in the area of good news, uh, NATO has decided it's going to remain a, a nuclear alliance. Um, however, uh, again, uh, capabilities are very small in number and, and low in readiness, and uh, modernization is, is far down uh, the pike. The um, Obama administration has delayed the introduction of nuclear capability on the F-35 until uh, 2025. Uh, so we are going to be uh, faced um, in, the, in the 2020s uh, with a uh, radically rearmed um, Russian Federation. They claim uh, that by 2020 they will modernize 70 percent of their conventional forces in addition to all the uh, nuclear uh, modernization I've been, I've been talking about. Uh, they'll never make that uh, in the sense that uh, all their uh, dates, at least the initial ones, turn out um, to be uh, at least several years uh, more optimistic than, than what actually happens. But the overall trend uh, is uh, toward very substantial modernization and uh, uh, Russian superiority along most of its border, uh, where it faces um, um, states with, with fairly minimal uh, military capability. And this could be very tempting. Uh, to Putin. Well, that concludes my uh, prepared presentation. Thank you.